Hi all, it's Warren Toomey again. Welcome back to this continuing series on my crazy small CPU. Uh, we're about halfway through, or maybe a third of the way through the rebuild uh, of version 2, and we're going to talk about the multiplexer uh, and what it does as part of the design. So let me just take this away and bring back the design, which I still haven't reprinted from version 1. But as I mentioned for version 2, we have a multiplexer that provides input to both the A and the B registers. Now the job of the multiplexer is to make a choice based on some sort of uh, input, whether to take input from one place or a different place and bring that into uh, the two registers. So it's a thing that makes a choice. It's a bit, bit like a gate. You swing the gate one way and input can come in uh, through the opening. You swing the gate to the other direction and the input can come in from the other direction. So, what type of chip are we using to do that? We're using a 74LS157, which is a 2 to 1 multiplexer. So that means we've got a single select bit, and that can choose either from one input or a different input. And it's got four bits. So we've got four bits coming in as one input, four bits coming in as the other input, and based on the select line, four bits go out to the output, which is known as the Q output. Now in the crazy small CPU, uh, when we set the select line to zero, we read from the address bus. And when we set the select line to one, we read from the data bus. So why do we need both and why are we making a choice in the first place? If I go back to the design, you'll see that sometimes the output from the ALU goes down the data bus and it could be stored in RAM. And of course, once things are in RAM, we want to be able to get them back out again. So we want to be able to read from the data bus and into our registers. But when you first turn on the computer, what's in RAM is a bit spurious. And sometimes you actually want to get known constant values. So the alternative place is to load from the ROM where things are known. So we can read part of the address, which would normally be used for selecting the RAM. But we can take eight of those bits and select the bottom four and use those to be a constant. So by having the multiplexer, we can either choose to read from RAM or read from the data bus or read a constant and set the registers up to have constant values. Excellent. Now let's talk about the 74LS157. You would really like to have a chip where there's a select line coming in somewhere, four bits coming in for A, four bits coming in for the second input, and four output bits on the other side. Well, unfortunately, it's not wide up so nice and easy as that. So let's actually have a look and see what we've got. So here's the pinout of the 74LS157. Uh, we've got some standard things. We've got VCC coming in on pin 16. We've got ground coming in on pin 8. And we've got a couple of control lines. Uh, pin 1 is the select line. Remember, there's only one single bit for selecting from either the A input or the B input. We've got one more control line, which is line 15. Active low, enable. When that line's low, then the multiplexer does its job. When that uh, line is high, all the outputs are zero. Okay, so basically we're gonna tie that to be low. Now it would be really nice if we had eight inputs on the left, two uh, times four, and only four bits on the out of the other side which as outputs. Uh, unfortunately it doesn't work like that. So how does it work? Well, we've got A bit coming in, B bit coming in, and the output Q. And that's just one of the four bits. And this pattern repeats. So we've got an A bit coming in, a B bit coming in, and a Q bit coming out. Over on the right, same pattern an A bit coming in, a B bit coming in, and a Q bit going out. And of course, an A bit coming in, a B bit coming in, and a Q bit going out. So if we flip over to the schematic, and this is the schematic with a couple of mistakes in it, um, the output of the ALU um, bits 4, 5, 6, and 7 are going to come up, and this is effectively the data bus. It's possibly going to be written into the RAM, 
but at the same time four of those bits are also going to be taken down to go into the multiplexer. Two of them are going to go to the left hand side of the MUX and the other two are going to go into the right hand side of the MUX. So if we want to read from the data bus, the data goes up the database into the RAM or the RAM puts it on the data bus and it can go down into the multiplexer. The other alternative uh, for getting inf information into the multiplexer are uh, four of the address lines, the low four address lines. And that's what we use for getting constants into the multiplexer and then also into the two registers. So again, four bits are taken, two bits drop down and come in. So those are the low two bits, A0, A1, B0, B1. And uh, the other two bits cross over, the top two bits cross over, and they become uh, A2, B2, A3, and B3. Then the outputs, Q0, Q1, Q2, and Q3, they drop down and cross over to the left and become the inputs to the A register and ditto down into the B register. Now eventually we want to end up with this uh, logical diagram that will be the finished crazy CPU, uh, small CPU version 2. But where are we up to with the wiring? So far we're up to here. So we've got A and B registers feeding into the ALU. We can provide an operation for the ALU to perform. The result goes out to the data bus, into the RAM which is not used at the moment, also into the multiplexer, or alternatively I can hardwire up a constant on the other input to the multiplexer and then we can choose to select either the output of the ALU or a constant to put into the A and B registers. And of course they've got their own individual load lines so I can put a constant into A and I can choose to put a different constant into B or I can actually load from the output of the ALU into either of these. Right, so I've brought the um, breadboard back and I've got the uh, power wired up and I'll just go and turn it on. And when you turn it on you get a healthy dose of randomness in the registers and thus a healthy dose of randomness out on the ALU. I've wired the ALU up uh, to be doing uh, ads uh, with no uh, binary ads with no carries and you can also now see the, the green lines which carry the data out from the ALU into the RAM and you can also see those green lines taking the RAM output and putting it into the multiplexer. And then on the left hand side where I've got these patch wires, I've got the bottom four bits for constants uh, loading into the multiplexer. And then I've got the green wires taking the multiplexer values out and loading them into the A register. And then some more wires to bring them over into the B register. And don't forget we've got separate load lines for A and B. And this is the select line to choose whether I take uh, data from the data bus or constants from the RAM. Okay, right now both registers have got pretty much rubbish in them, so let's quickly both load them up with B, oh, with zero. I'm going to set a constant zero, and I'm going to load both of them at the same time with zero. All right. Um, I'm just going to quickly uh, leave B loading, and I'm going to set it to be the number one. All right, remember that uh, the register LEDs are backwards, so we've got uh, most significant, uh, least significant bit 1, and of course 1 plus 0 is the number 1. Alright, I'm going to leave B with that constant, and at the moment A is the constant 0. So if I now um, change the multiplexer selection line and make it high, it's now going to be loading the A register. Well, let me just set the A register up to loading. I'm going to be loading the A register from the data bus, which of course is the number one. So if I press um, the clock button, hopefully I'll get one loaded up into the A register. Excellent. Now you'll notice that even though we've loaded A up into the A register with one, we now have one and one is two. That two is not being loaded into the A register. So even though the number two is there, and the output is going down the data bus into the multiplexer and this side of the A register actually has the number 2. We're not loading it until uh, we set the load line and we toggle the clock. So we've basically now got a loop. We've got 
uh, addition going on, a constant one, and every time we make a new addition, it cycles out and gets loaded back into the A register. So fingers crossed if I don't get too many clock glitches, I press the button again, one plus one is two, two is going to be loaded down the lines through the multiplexer and into the A register. And it worked. And this time two plus one is three. The output of three is over there. It's coming down the lines, waiting to be loaded into the address register, uh, the A register. And I only have to press the button for it to load three into the A register. And of course now we have four. And basically I now have a counter. So I have this beautiful little loop. If I go back to my lovely little diagram, which I had just a minute ago, B is the constant one. A and B are being added. The output goes out and back around into the multiplexer, presented to be loaded into A. As soon as I press the clock button, uh, it gets loaded and the cycle repeats. So if I don't get too many clock glitches, I should be able to count what are we up to? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, oops, ten, eleven, twelve, I've clicked too many times, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and next after fifteen is zero, and there'd be a carry coming out on the carry bit on the ALU. Two, oh, I've clicked, clicked again, uh, four, five, eight, oh dear, it's a bit sensitive, not too much debouncing going on here. You get the general idea, it is actually working, I'm just not pressing three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and back to zero and back to one. All right, so even though we don't have any control working at the moment, we can manually drive what control lines we've got to choose the input of the multiplexer, to load the A and B registers as required, and to choose what ALU operation we're performing. Excellent, so the data side of the CPU is actually fairly nearly complete. We've only got to put the RAM into action and also set up the flags register as well. And that's probably going to be the next uh, video coming up.